Hi friends, welcome to my channel PLSI Yarn. Uh, friends, in today's session, we will discuss about functions and tasks in Verilog. These constructs are very important and we often use in uh, our code. So let us see what is a function and what is the task and what is the difference between these two. So let's start. Function in Verilog. A function is meant to do some processing on input and return a single value. Like in a C language, we have functions. Similarly, in Verilog also, we have a function and which is meant to do some processing, some operation on the input and return a single value, like addition or subtraction, multiplication, anything. It can be any processing and it returns a value. The purpose of the function is to return a value that is to be used in an expression. Functions are sections of Verilog code that allow the digital designer, means the RTL designer or the uh, designer to write more reusable and maintainable codes. Because if the code is having the same, same functions more number of times, so it is better to use function so that the code is more readable. Often a function is created when the same operation is done over and over throughout the very long code. If same function is done, like addition of two numbers is done more number of times, so we can create a function and we can call the function as many number of times as we are adding these numbers. Rather than rewriting the code, one can just call the function. As I said earlier, we can simply call the function. This prevents error. Which kind of the error? Like copy-paste errors can be removed and uh, prevented and also allows the more maintainable code. The code looks more easy to understand and read. Uh, more uh, about the functions in Veritalk. Function can have any number of inputs. It can have any number of inputs. There is no restrictions on the number of the input a Verilog function can have, but only one output. Remember friends, it only returns a single value. This is the main point we need to remember about the function in Verilog, that it returns a single value. It can have any number of the inputs, but it can have only a single output. The order of the inputs to a function dictates how it should be wired up when called. Okay, the order dictates how it should be wired up when it is called. The return type default to is one bit unless defined otherwise. The return is always one bit if not mentioned. Otherwise, you need to mention if it is more than one bit. And there is no delay and it starts immediately at zero time. Okay, so there is no concept of time delay in functions. Functions can call another function but they cannot call task, okay? So remember that function can call another function, but they cannot have that capability to call another task. Functions can drive global variables external to the functions. You can have global variables external to the function. Variables declared, declared inside a function are local to that function. So, okay, whatever the variables we declare inside the function, this is a common uh, for all the kind of the uh, thing. So variables which are declared inside a function are local to that function and variables which are declared outside external to that function are global variables. So function have the capability to drive global variables also. And one more thing we should remember that non-blocking assignment in function is illegal. We should never use non-blocking assignment. The main thing is that friends here, you have to remember in very dog function is that these functions are mainly used for the combinational logic. Like we have the arithmetic operation, logical operation, whatever we have that which is not related to time. When you are talking about the sequential circuits, we have definitely a clock and there is a delay or a timing parameters or not. So whenever we have a sequential circuit, we mainly use non-blocking assignment. So as in this function, we are not going for any uh, sequential or the clocking part or the timing related uh, activities. So there is no use of non-blocking assignment. So this is what is a function in very long. Next, let us see uh, what uh, is a function in terms of a Verilog code. Previously, we have understood what is a function and what are the things to be avoided, what are the things should be present in a function. Now, let us see, I have taken a simple example of a full adder, friends. So full adder, you know that the sum, S is the sum model I have named as a full adder. S is the sum, C out is the carry of the full adder, A and B are the inputs and C is the other input, third input C. In. Now we have the three inputs, A, B, and C in. Full adder is a circuit, as you know, can add three bits. So output is sum and can. 
So here, what we are doing here is I'm assigning S. S is what? S is the sum of this module, um, output of this module. So S is nothing but the output, which I'm assigning as sum of A, B, and C. So I'm calling here the function sum. So this sum will pro do the addition of these three numbers and whatever the sum is there, that will be assigned to S. Similarly, in the carry out also, assign C out. So I have called here the carry function and which will perform the carry operation on these three inputs and it will return a carry and that carry will be assigned to C out. So this is our main code. Now we will see how the function is written. You can see here function sum, which we have called here for the sum. Inputs are any inputs. You can take X, Y, Z. It is not necessary that you have to take the same um, main. Begin. What operation is going to happen here? We know that sum is nothing but XOR operation. So I have taken that only XOR of X, Y, and Z. And end and, and function. Okay, we have here begin and here end. We have created a function. So we have and that function. Similarly, for the carry also, function carry, input x, y, z, begin. Carry is nothing but x, y, y, z, and x, z. So the same, we have taken x into y, x and y, or y and z, or this is the or symbol, x and z, and and n function. So this is, this is how we are using. So how many times do you want? You can call this and you can uh, use it in your code so that your code looks more simple and easy to re re easily readable right and one more thing here is you can observe that is the sum or the carry is nothing but a single uh, value which is the function is returning to the main code next we'll go for the task task in Verilog we use Verilog task to write small sections of the code that we can reuse throughout our design See friends, task is a, like a broader thing and it is much more uh, bigger than the function. Here it is not necessary that it should return a single value and there is no restriction on the time or the um, delay. So we have the task which we use to rewrite the same parts of the code which are repeating so that we can write using the task. So we can use time consuming constructs such as wait, pausage, or delays within a task. So there is no restriction for time. You can use timing constructs such as wait, you can use, you can use pausage or negage of the clock, you can use delays, you can use uh, all this kind of the things in the task. Very log task can also have any number of inputs. Okay, it can have any number of inputs and can also generate any number of outputs. It can generate any number of the outputs and the outputs are of the type uh, like we have output and in out that we'll see in the next part of this video. So in this construct, in this contrast to function, uh, which can have only written a single value. As we have earlier discussed, function can return only a single value, but your task can return any number of values. So here you can see an example of the task module full adder, the same full adder I have taken how we can write using a task. Earlier when discussing about the function, we have seen how we can write a full adder using function. Now we are seeing how we can write using a task. So module full adder, S is my output, sum, C out is my carry out, A, B and C are, are the three inputs to the full adder. So the same I have declared here, input A, B, C in output reg as uh, S and C out. Now, see here, always at A, B, or C, E. Means whenever these values of input changes, then we have called this task F, A, C, and C out. I think o, R, T is missing here. So, C out, A, B, and C, E. So, this is what how we have called a function. Now, we are defining the task. Uh, sorry, we have def called a task. And we are now defining the task here. Task F, A same name which we have used here output is nothing but the sum and carry inputs are a b and c okay you have to now sum also and carry also so your sum and carry both will be provided by the task there is no need for a function to earlier we have seen that we need to uh, we used to carry two functions we have uh, called two functions one is for the sum and one is for the carry but here you can observe the difference that a single task is able to perform both the functions of sum 
and carry. This is the main difference between a function and task because it can return any number of values. Okay. So sum is nothing but ax or bx or c. Carry is a and b or b and c or c and a. And end task we have here. Begin here end and end task and end module. So this is how we use a task in the Verilog code. Now let us see what are the points we have understood, list out, and we will discuss the difference between the function and task in Verilog. So function, function can call another function, but it is not able to call a another task within it, right? Whereas a task can call both functions as well as task. Task is a much higher level, so it can call a function as well as a task. Another task also it can call within itself, right? Then function execute in zero simulation time. What is the reason for this? Because there is no concept of delay. So there is no delay. So its execution starts at zero simulation time. It may execute in non-zero simulation because here delays are possible. Wait is there, pause it is there. So there are certain chances of that it may execute at different. It has the capability to execute at non-zero simulation time also. Cannot have a delay event and timing control statements. It does not contain any kind of delay event and timing control. Okay, function. Whereas when coming to the task, it can have delay, event, and timing control statements. So this is the another difference which we have seen in the previous slides also that we have listed out here. Right. Next, always function always returns a single value. This is no because we have used in the earlier example also sum is a one function and carry also another function because we know that function can return only a single value. So this is what is a function. Whereas a task can pass multiple values to output or in output, in out type of arguments, right? So here task, as we have seen in the previous example, where a task is used for uh, generating or returning the value of both sum as well as carry. So it has the capacity of passing multiple values, okay? Then the last point you can see is must have at least one input argument. Yes, definitely it must have one input argument because it is like must more like a uh, it is performing an operation on the input and returning a value. Function is what its main task is. Its main function is to uh, operate or to process some input and return a value. Whereas task can have zero or more number of arguments. There is no restrictions that uh, this single at least one input should be there. It may have, it may not have. So this is the difference between a function and a task in very long. So I hope that this video was helpful to you in understanding the function and task in Verilog and the difference between these two. Uh, I'll come with more number of videos and uh, please uh, like, share and subscribe to my channel. And thanks a lot for watching this video.